What's it like to be in a medieval dungeon? It's not somewhere you want to be for long. Today, we're going inside Lancaster Castle. You're listening to Travel FOMO, a podcast for people self-diagnosed with wanderlust. Welcome to Travel FOMO. I'm Jamin Houghton, and I'm here as always with my wife, Hillary. Hello. We've enjoyed taking you across the pond to England, and we've got another great episode for you today. But before we get started, do us a favor, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the Travel FOMO podcast from wherever you're listening. Yeah, that's super helpful for us. Um, let's get into it. Let's talk about Lancaster. And um, we arrived there from Houghton. Uh, yes. We've been staying at Houghton Tower, which if you guys did not listen to that episode, please, please, please go back and check that out. That was our last episode. And it's um, crazy because Jamin's family actually traces back to this castle uh, called Houghton Tower. And so um, we got to stay there. So that was where we were staying. And we, you know, had it. We were driving. <laughs> <laughs> you were so driving. I was driving in, uh, in England for the first time. And so um, and it was raining which was an added layer of thrill and um we made our way to Lancaster and uh, which was a bit of a drive it was a little bit of a hike from from Houghton and um but we arrived in Lancaster is pretty cool um yeah. the, the castle itself is you know up on a up on a hill and in, in the old part of town and so um kind of made our way up there and um and I Actually, I have to say this for the record, so everyone knows, I did parallel parking on the left side of the road, and that was amazing and a really big deal. And I remember even taking, a, like, I think I did a video clip to send to our friends, um, Casey and Nelson, to say, like, <laughs> I just parallel parked on the left side of the road, and it was so hard, but I did it. And anyway, that was, like, a really big deal. But, um, yeah, the driving in another country is uh, is such a trip that it's, it's a lot of fun. But, um, but, yeah, we arrived. It was raining, which just added a whole other layer to the whole feeling of going inside a castle that uh, is as domineering as the Lancaster Castle. So we show up to the castle mm -hmm. and you did your parallel park, which mm -hmm. was like, it was impressive. I think all of the, <laughs> the driving that you did, having to drive from the wrong side on the wrong side, like it was all like more than I was going to take on. I was <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. If you like, you can drive, but uh, you did a, a great job with it. But you show up to Lancaster Castle, and it's just so impressive. It's very formidable. Yeah. Yes. Kind of up on the hill, several stories tall, these massive walls and the gates, like big iron gates, like all of the all of the things that you would expect from a medieval castle, yeah. like a big imposing castle and you can kind of understand why they why they built them i think for a long time i always thought like well if you were invading someplace and there was a castle you could just just go around it mm -hmm. and like what's going to happen but you begin to understand that the way they're positioned and the way they're built is very domineering and very imposing and very much a like this is the authority and whoever is holding this castle calls the shots around here and you have to go in there and take them out if you are going to. And they can see you for miles. Yes. For miles and miles. They're up on a hill. If you're to go to them, you're going to have to exhaust your, completely exhaust yourself mm -hmm. trying to get to the castle itself. They can see you for miles, so there's no hiding from them. It's just really... Um, well done. Good strategy. Yeah. They have every advantage mm -hmm. and you have no advantage. Yeah. Um, and we got to, you can go tour it and mm -hmm. um, it costs a little bit to take the tour. When we were there, it was partially under construction. So the more medieval castle part of it, like the, like the courtyard and things like that, we didn't get to see, uh, which I was kind of disappointed about. Um wish that we could have if we're back in Lancaster would probably like want to go see that part yeah. again but we did get to to still go on a pretty extensive tour yeah. uh, a great tour guide one of the first places they took us was the dungeons 
and they have like they have a room of like some old uh, torture devices and things like that that you see, but then they take you down to actually the holding cells, and so you walk down this narrow stone stairway into this really dark, uh, damp, really cold, menacing place where yeah. people were held as they were awaiting trial there, because it was the the court of the area. Mm-hmm. So if you were accused of a crime in that area, you were taken to Lancaster Castle where you would that's where your trial would happen. You would yeah. be judged. And some of their most famous um prisoners that were held there were the Pendle Witches, which is a really kind of fascinating tale of which is much like if you if you're an American, you kind of grew up hearing about the Salem witch trials. Right. Well, the Pendle witch trials were, were much the same. And you find out that it's this time of a lot of superstition where a lot of people don't really know uh, what to think about supernatural kind of stuff and are very afraid. Mm-hmm. And there's sort of this this spirit of fear that's manufactured and whether that be through legend or through the local government or through religious um, leaders and and religious process or some kind of mixture of all of that are very, very afraid of witches and the supernatural. And you then find out as you learn more about them that, oh, the only real evidence that there is, it's all just testimony. Right. And Anybody you, could be victim. You or I could be victim. Right. All it really takes is you being accused and enough people thinking like, mm, yeah, that could probably be true. And mm-hmm. you find out that that the people that were on trial in the Pendle Witch trials, which I think there was like 13 or 14 of them, and I think um, one of them died while in prison and the rest were executed in some manner. Wow. But um, you find out that they... They come from rival families, and it's basically people just accusing the other ones, and and it kind of con- becomes this convenient thing of if you want to really get back at someone, you're like, well, they're a witch. And oh my gosh! You find out that one of you know one of the one of the older ones, one of the grandmothers of, of this family, had been a local healer, and for years and years and years, in her village had helped people in in that way, but then was accused of healing through witchcraft. And so now it's a problem. And in that day and time, there there was a hyper awareness and this vigilance of like, we need to get rid of all witches. And so this trial takes place and it all takes place there in Lancaster Castle. And they're held in these cells that you actually get to go stand in and see uh, to this day, as part of this tour, you get to walk in there and kind of look around. And it's it's really kind of a spooky thing to think, like, one, if there are witches, like, they were held in here and that's kind of scary. Two, if they weren't. Right? They're just innocent people. Yeah. And I'm just an innocent person. And imagining yourself, like, being stuck in, in a cell like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was pretty creepy. Is there something you know about that revolutionizes the way you travel? Can it solve problems and help people around the roadblocks on their adventures? Is it just plain cool? If you have a product like that, we'd love to tell people about it. Get in contact with us and maybe next time we'll be talking about your product right now. The courtrooms were really interesting too. Yeah, part of the tour, you get to go in a couple of courtrooms, and one of them has the family crests of all of the sheriffs that have served there for the last however long, like hundreds of years, Mm -hmm. which was really cool to see um, for us. Like we had just been at Houghton Tower, and so my, like my family crest, Uh, There was a bunch of them through there. Like we counted quite a few of them that at different times had served as sheriff. And we think of sheriff as being 
uh, sort of local like county seed law enforcement. But um, there it was more of a it was a still judicial system, but was sort of the not a governor, but a person in authority over the justice system for that area. And so all of these um, family crests are lined up in there and it's still an active courtroom. Like it's still used for court sessions today. And so you can't take pictures in there because like, it's still a, like it's still a functioning courtroom, which was, is kind of crazy and cool that, that that stuff, it's still going on there. It's still being used for that. I didn't expect that. So wait, let's go back to the fact that your family crest (laughs) is on the wall. I mean, how crazy is that for you to see that? I mean, it was pretty crazy. I knew, I knew because one of my ancestors was involved in the Pindle witch trials and like was one of the judges for that. And so I knew that, that there was one sheriff in my family. But then when we got in there and you see and you're like, oh, there's the crest. Oh, wait, it's there too. And there too. And there too. And there too. And then you just see so many of them. Um, for me, it kind of hit me a little bit. I kind of like shrunk in myself a little bit because I was like, wow, like so, so many people in my family have done important things and held important positions and like served in important ways. And I kind of had this feeling all of a sudden that like, I'm kind of insignificant Mm. and I haven't really done much and I haven't, I haven't contributed much and I haven't, I haven't had an impact as much as like so much of my family did. And it kind of, it kind of weighed on me for a little bit. I think I, I remember us talking about it even later that day where it's like, man, all of these significant people in in my family and like, how did I, how did I miss the mark or where did I Mm. get off from? You know? Yeah. I, that's like, that's really heavy. I'm sure other people can relate to that too. And, um, I'm just personally really glad that my family is so insignificant that I have never... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have this amazing family castle that I have to live up to. No, but that's um, that. those are real, real feelings once you recognize your family history. And sometimes it's just so big. Um, and we are only individuals, you know? We only... But we do bring something to the table every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is interesting to, it it makes you take stock and think like, wow, what, like, what do I have going on? What am I doing? Right. Yeah. Well, you are the most important Halton in my life. (laughs) Well, that's good. I'll take that title. You've made the mark. (laughs) (laughs) And then they took us on a part of the tour that uh, was a prison. So it was a modern day prison, uh, which is everything that you would kind of think of a prison, small cells, like all in a row with like bars that close and things like that. Like, just like you would picture a prison to be. Right. And like yellow fluorescent lights and like all that stuff. Yeah. It was like very modern. Right. And modern, but then in the walls of this castle. Yeah. And so like the, like the yard where people would go out to exercise or just be outside during the day is in these castle walls, yeah, uh, which crazy. was crazy to think of. Um, I think they, they told us during the tour that there was a prisoner in there in one of the cells that actually invented like Pilates or a, like a way mm. of, of working out and staying in shape in his cell there in in that prison, I think during World War Two. That's crazy. Yeah, which just kind of blows your mind. But they, it's not a functioning prison anymore. But they still take you on tours of it. You can still see all of that part of it, which was less what we were there for. You know, we were there to kind of see a castle, um, but that, like, just to see how the building evolved over time of like medieval castle to then modern day prison and it like it's not a prison anymore but it's still a courtroom was was something else and 
in addition to it being a courtroom, they have two courtrooms there. One of them still has uh, a brand and not a brand of like my brand. I want everyone to like know what I am and not what I'm all about, but an actual brand, like a cattle brand, like you warm like up. cast iron. Yeah, like you warm up an iron brand and hold it to someone's skin to brand them when they're convicted of a crime. Where would they brand them? On the hand. On the hand. And it's, there was like a little yeah, place for them to put their hand right. so they wouldn't get away. So your hand kind of gets strapped down in this and then they take this iron brand and brand you right on like kind of the base of your thumb. Wow. So that then you would be known after that as having been convicted of a crime. Wow. That's your scarlet letter. Right. Yeah. The, just the, the nature of that and how kind of cruel that is. And just to see kind of just the no mercy Mm, of yeah. like you've been convicted of this crime so now you're gonna have to wear this brand the rest of your life was mm-hmm. a crazy thing to kind of take in yeah and then, well and speaking of no mercy like the hangings that they did there yeah it became a uh, an execution place too and they they actually take you into the drop room with the um the the drop floor where they would hang people and so we're on this tour and, and I kept thinking that it was crazy because we go down this dungeons and then we're in these courtroom. They're showing us these brands and now we're in this drop room. In a torture chamber, right? Didn't we go right, to a torture yeah, chamber? Right, yeah, like a torture chamber. They're showing you the brand. You're in a drop room. They still have a noose that had been used in that drop room in one of the executions. And we're on this tour with like a bunch of little kids. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. I don't, like, obviously, we didn't know any of them. And they definitely targeted kids in their promotions and their branding. Right. And everything it's like, was come check out like, Lancaster Castle. And... Buy, buy a sword from our souvenir shop and <laughs> yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. And it was like, oh, and here's where we hang people. Right. Yeah. But like, so much of that building being like local government was just crazy interesting. Yeah. And the stories out of there, they did tell us that before they started doing executions on site, they would do executions in a different part of Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And so you would basically be held and then sentenced at Lancaster Castle. And then you would have to walk this ways to the execution hill and they would pass the, I think it was the Lion's Head Pub, mm-hmm. and you would stop right. in at the pub and have your last drink there at the pub, and your family would, like, be there. And so you'd have, like, one last drink with your family before you would go wow. get executed. Which, I didn't remember that part, that, like, your loved ones would be meet you at the pub. Right. Wow. And That's crazy. I can't imagine... I can't imagine ever going there and feeling good about it. Like if you, from any side of anything, you know, if you had known someone that, that you had met there, like how could you ever go back to that place again? Or it just seems like such an odd thing to let happen of like, well, this is where everybody comes right, to die. Like we'll let them have one more drink before they go get executed. Yeah. That, that is really crazy. Um, it just kind of blew my mind. Yeah. But, and then after we left the castle, like we got to go uh, check out like the city of Lancaster, which was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And speaking of meals, like our meal in, in Lancaster was really close to the lion's head. Pop. Yeah. Um, we were kind of across the street, maybe down a little bit, um, at an old wine cellar that had been turned into um, a restaurant and bar. And it was so close to the castle 
that I almost wonder if it wasn't the wine cellar, the castle's old wine cellar or something. It was just huge. Um, I think it was. Like, it, it almost would have had to have been, I would think, because it was in such close proximity. And it was and it was so large and um, and just had all these different um, uh, tunnels that where you would eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Within these, like, these brick tunnels underground. And um, it was called Merchants 1688. Um, so yeah. we probably need to look into the history of that, but, um, but it was a great little restaurant bar, um, really great vibes. Again, it was a rainy day. It was cold. Um, so it was super cozy and warm inside this, um, this wine cellar turned into this fabulous restaurant. Yeah. It was such a cool spot. Um, and we just happened to find it. I don't even remember how. We just found it. It was awesome. Yeah. It was a great, like, it was a great pick. Um, the food was great. And the ambiance was so cool. Yeah. Just being in a wine cellar. Like, you just walk in. There's a big bar. And then, like you said, these just little offshoot tunnels. Yes. Where yeah. all the tables were set up. Mm-hmm. It was really well done. Well, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Travel FOMO podcast. Our time in Lancaster was pretty wet and rainy and a little cold, but uh, we made the most of it. It ended up being a great time. Yeah. Tell us about some of your rainy day memories from vacation. Where'd you go? What'd you do? Uh, Even though it was raining, like, how'd you make the most of it? Yeah. Uh, post uh, post some stuff on social media about it and tag us in it. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. That's right. And that is also where we'll be sharing some photos from Lancaster, including a look at the wine cellar restaurant that we mentioned in this episode. Um, it was just really cool. Yeah. It's very, very charming. And um, and then you can also follow our adventures at TravelFOMOPodcast.com. Well, next week, uh, you'll be sure to want to tune in because we take a very different turn from the wet and rainy Lancaster and we head to Italy. That's right. That's awesome. We're going to talk about Milan. And um, so if you enjoyed this podcast, if you're liking what you're hearing, help others find us. And you can do that by taking time to rate, review and subscribe to the Travel FOMO podcast from wherever you're listening. Life is short. Wander well. 